Right everyone, what is going on? Buster Barnes here, bringing you my game week preview for Fantasy Premier League Game Week 19. A double game week, one that's taken a few twists and turns leading up to the deadline, so I'll be sure to keep you guys notified on that in this video. I'll also be going over my team in Game Week 18. A blank game week, two a double one, very exciting times. One that can prove crucial to our ranks um, for the FPL season, so do stay tuned for this video if you enjoy these previews and reviews please be sure to leave a like comment down below what you guys are planning on doing or how you did in game week 18 i would love to know join the league code at the top of the screen it's never too late to do so and as always do subscribe for fantasy premier league content but with that all out of the way let's get into seeing how my team did in game week 18 Okay, so as you can see by the screen, our rank has increased to 255,059th um, place in the league, which is very nice. 51, 21 points above the average, although we did take a minus 4, so technically 17 points above the average if you take it like that. Obviously, we're without a goalkeeper starting, which was a bit of a shame, but the rest of the team, it delivered. Our defenders especially, Cancelo, Maguire, all both getting clean sheets. Regulon, not getting a clean cheap but actually getting an assist and three bonus points so very nice to have someone like him who's a little bit of a differential going to the midfield it was a bit less impressive just a few you know 90 minutes played a few clean sheets there De Bruyne though my captain getting the assist was technically I guess the right captain actually suppose Harry Kane would have been better he got a goal and some bonus points in Spurs's win or sorry Spurs's draw against Fulham a very surprising result that one and Brewster coming on with the one point a bit annoyed of my bench placement I don't know why Mitchell was my last sub to be fair I'm not too sure if he would have been ahead of Brewster or not but yeah seeing that eight points on the bench is a little bit sad um, knowing that we could have maybe even boosted ourselves up even more but you can't really complain too much when you have in fact got that Green Arrow and then Rose de Ranks. Not by loads, I think it's by about 30k, but I'll definitely still take it at this point. Like I said, it was a blank game week, so not many things to discuss. Sheffield's getting their first win of the season due to a red card. Man United's winning 1 0 against Burnley. Wolves and Everton at 2 1 there. Not too sure if there's anyone to really keep an eye on there. I guess maybe Digne will and rear his head again as an option. Maybe Hamas Rodriguez now that he's back. Um, Man City winning 1 0 against Brighton. Maybe some people were hoping for more, and if you brought in other City players maybe you were a bit upset but I think that De Bruyne was good and at least Mares actually played I was telling you guys in the previous video that he's probably been my worst transfer in FPL for a while just hasn't played but um, I couldn't get rid of him basically because of the um, Villa game changing um, so I had to keep him and at least he actually played 90 minutes so I guess there was that like I said Spurs and Fulham drawing one or maybe when Fulham's fix just get a bit easier um, they'll actually be someone to keep an eye on I know Loftus-Cheek actually had quite a good game for Fulham and um, finally Arsenal nil Crystal Palace nil if you had defenders from the teams like a Mitchell you would be laughing although you wouldn't be laughing if you had Tierney because he actually didn't feature which was a good thing for me because I know that quite a few people have brought him in so I think that definitely helps out my rank that Tierney did not feature in that game Saka just getting the standard three points but I don't want to dwell on this too long guys as I do want to give you guys my preview to game week 19 so that is how my team has done let me know how yours guys have done in the comments below so a drastic change has hit my team guys i have hit the wildcard button i let some of you guys know my um, idea or plan which was to use the wild cards for this week um and keep an eye out for the fixtures ahead you know this isn't just the team for game week 19 I've, they've also got some decent fixtures going into 20 and 21 as well um a little bit of a rookie mistake on my behalf i say rookie i've been doing this for a while but I thought for some reason that you could use your wild card and your bench boost at the same time. Now, I knew you couldn't use some chips at the same time, like your bench boost, free hit, and triple captain, but I thought wild card didn't apply to that, but apparently it does. So um, that's a little bit unfortunate, although I would have used my wild card anyway, so that doesn't really matter. As you can see, everyone in the starting 11 is playing two games. Now, maybe that's a bit risky getting rid of some Spurs players like Kane and Son. But, um, you know, they've got some tricky fixtures coming up soon, so maybe it won't be too bad. I can always try and get them in. Um, but because I can't use a bench boost this week, something is dwelling on my mind. I'm thinking, should I try and build a bench for the week after and use my bench boost then? As you can see, I've got Meslier, Smith Rowe, Mitchell, and I could even upgrade one of them if this is the plan I'm going to go with. But I don't know. Do I wait it out for another double game week eventually down the line? I honestly have no clue, to, to be honest. So um, that is... 
a little bit um, of um, a dilemma that I am struggling with at the moment. But with that said, let's just go through my team. Martinez in goal, Man City away and Newcastle at home. Now, one big thing that I was talking about earlier with the twists and turns is that some fixtures have actually been taken away. Now, Leeds versus Southampton, I believe was the fixture, is not going to happen. So that means that Meslier, as you can see on the bench, only has the one game. Now, if he had two games, there is a chance that I would have been um, starting him, you know, uh, Burnley, or not Burnley, Brighton and Southampton at home is probably a bit better than Man City away and Newcastle at home. So he was maybe got the start because he's only got the one game. I'm not going to do that. Um, also, Aston Villa's fixture got changed. Um, so they won't be facing Everton at home. They will be facing Newcastle. And I'm pretty sure that means that Everton don't have a fixture next week. So, um, yeah, if you have Everton assets, you do need to get rid of them. Obviously, that's good. I'm using my wildcard so I could get rid of Calvert-Lewin and still have some transfers to spare. But, um, yeah, in goal, I'm going with Martinez. Um, Rhys James, a little bit of an outside shout. Fulham away and Leicester away. Might not mean clean sheets I'm not too sure maybe against Fulham you don't know Fulham are playing quite well at the moment but he's just back in the team he's cheaper than um, Ben Chilwell and I'm thinking that maybe he can get one or two attacking returns at least that's a bit hopeful he is a bit more of a riskier option you know maybe I could have tried to get another midfielder or another striker but um, I don't know James I just have a feeling that I just want him I could maybe upgrade him to Chilwell I think I have enough money to do that but um yeah, I'm not too sure. We'll have to see when the deadline does actually hit. Um, Sue Fowl, really wanted this guy on my team for a while. And what better week to bring him in when West Ham have got Burnley and West Brom at home. Um, obviously, it's nothing's guaranteed, but you'd like to hope that there's at least a clean sheet in there. He's been quite attacking for West Ham. I am expecting some good points out of him. And I think West Ham's fixtures after this aren't too bad either. Um, and, yeah, hopefully that Sufal can provide what he's been providing. I'm a few FPL managers already. Cancelo um, there as well, staying for my Man City side. Palace and Villa at home are two good fixtures. You can't get past it. Um, could I be a bit more safe and maybe swap him out for Diaz? I'm not sure. Could I double up and get John Stones and replace maybe a uh, Reese James with him? That is potentially crossing my mind. I don't know because James has the attacking threat, but obviously Man City's fixtures look a bit better for clean sheets. And um, Stones is obviously a little bit cheaper as well. So I'm a bit, you know, a bit of a toss up what I do there. I could definitely see um, Stones in this team eventually, but obviously we'll have to wait. Um, this team's obviously not fully set in stone yet, guys. Anything can happen, but obviously you will be updated on that um, after. Um, this game week does eventually end. Robertson wanted him back. I think that Liverpool was still good. Man U at home um, and Burnley at home. You, you don't know what could happen with that Man U game. There's been a lot of Liverpool and United games that have been like nil nil, so that could happen and that could still be good then for him. Um, I've got Mohamed Salah though, just in case that does change. Um, and you know he could always be the one to pop up in um, this sort of El Clasico English version derby that you would say um, Liverpool and United are. And also Burnley at home, you'd like to think that Salah could maybe get a goal there. Bruno Fernandes, Liverpool away and Fulham away. He is just Fernandes, he takes pens, United win them. Um, he is very attacking, so you've got to still have him. Um, De Bruyne is my captain. Crystal Palace and Villa at home. We'd just like to think that he's going to get some stuff out of that. I've got Grealish, which is maybe risky. Aston Villa players, guys, are actually very risky because they obviously had that COVID outbreak. Some of their players are in self-isolation. And it's not been made clear who those players were or which players are back in training, um, etc. So having Grealish and having Watkins, who I'll move on to as well, are two um, difficult, risky shouts. But they are ones that I'm willing to take. And to be honest, I could see myself upgrading Brewster to someone else. So if Watkins doesn't play, um, maybe whoever that is will come off the bench. So that wouldn't be too awful. But um, hopefully neither of them were that badly affected. I mean, Martinez could be as well, to be fair. But I've got Meslier on at the bench anyway. Um, finally, Mikel Antonio hasn't actually scored yet since his return. But I think these are two good fixtures for him to do it. Obviously, Halle has been sold. So you'd like to think that maybe Antonio will be... There to start maybe both games. I mean, hopefully he does. And um, you'd like to maybe see him get a goal or two this week. Now, I am playing it safe for the captain in De Bruyne. But I know some people are taking a few risks. And Antonio maybe isn't that bad an option. But yeah, guys, looking at my bench. Um, players that are only playing one game just went for the cheap option. Smith Rowe could turn out to be a very um, good option at the 4.4 or 4.3 million I bought him for. But um, yeah, this team isn't fully set yet, guys. Not too sure. Maybe I'll replace James with a Stones or someone else. You know, might replace a booster. Still don't know yet if I'm going to use my bench boost next week. If I decide that 
I'm not going to, then obviously Meslier will go for a cheaper goalkeeper. But this is my team at the moment, guys. Now, usually what I do is I focus on three games for you guys to be looking at in bringing in players. But because it's a double game week, I'm actually going to look at three teams that you guys should be focusing on. Team number one has to be Manchester City. Um, it doesn't get much better than Crystal Palace and Aston Villa at home. Obviously, Villa are a good side, but you'd still back City to maybe win that game or at least to maybe get some good defensive returns. So I definitely still stick with them. Another team is going to be West Ham. West Brom and Burnley at home. Um, again, what you'd expect them to win, some attacking returns, maybe even some defensive ones as well. I've obviously got both ends covered with Seafell and Antonio. So um, I do think that they are a good team to look out for. The final team is a tough one. I think I'm going to go with Liverpool just because they are at home twice. Man U's going to be a tough game. Burnley might not be easy, but um, because they're at home twice, you'd like to hopefully think some returns could be gathered. I think Leicester are an outside shout. Maybe even Chelsea are. United too. Um, there's a few teams you could look at. As long as you're looking at teams with double game these guys, I think you're fairly well set. Um, maybe stay away from Fulham players, but besides that, um, I think that you can't really go wrong, or oh, I'm West Brom players as well, obviously. But yeah, guys, that is my team, so do actually let me know um, in the comments down below what you guys are thinking of doing, what you think of what I'm doing. I'd love to hear your guys' tips and feedback and um, interact with you guys. Like I said, it's not too late to join the league code up there at the top of the screen. Hopefully, we can keep some consistency and get another green arrow. You'd like to think that with all of my players playing two games, hopefully... Um, that would mean a green arrow, but who knows, it's FPL, it is crazy, it's COVID as well, so who knows what is going to happen, but um, yeah guys, I do hope you have enjoyed this video, like I said, my review slash recap will be out after this game week does finish, so do stay tuned for that, if you enjoyed, leave a like, and subscribe for more fantasy Premier League content, I do hope you all have a nice weekend, and I'll see you next time.